Since 2009, Toyota's been teasing us with solid state batteries. And for years, Toyota was saying, hey, we're gonna bring you these solid state batteries by 2020. Of course, that didn't happen in 2023. Toyota said, hey, we're gonna bring these solid state batteries starting in 2027. Here we are in 2025 at the general shareholders meeting and Toyota has just broken silence on what has been almost two years in regards to solid state batteries. And I have this strange feeling that Toyota might not be able to follow through once again on their solid state battery deadline. <laughs> And make sure to stay to the end. I have a couple other news articles I wanted to discuss today, including tariffs on Japanese cars coming into the United States, as well as Nissan trying to avoid shutting down one of its plants and going through extreme measures to do so. If you're new to the channel, my name's Kirk. I cover car news every day. If you like that content, make sure to subscribe, hit the like button, and I will be leaving in about a day, a day and a half to go to California to drive some classic Honda models that you do not want to miss. Let's get into key competitor of Honda, which is Toyota. At the general shareholders meeting just happened over in Japan, Toyota was asked about solid state batteries. Toyota has this to say about solid state batteries. We're still developing them with a view to solving BEV issues in a single stroke. So they offer shorter charging times, higher output for longer range and great improved durability. They're less likely to blow up. They're less likely to have thermal runaway. As it happens, we have another project that is set to start when our all solid state batteries come off the line. What this project is, we haven't heard about it before. I have no idea. I could speculate all day, but there is not a sniff other than Toyota's working on something beyond solid state batteries, or should I say the, probably the next generation. Okay, I'm already speculating. The next generation of solid state batteries after uh, they already putting them in cars. Toyota's vice president, Nakajima, who's tackling this issue and questions about solid state batteries, he says, if we cannot produce all solid state batteries, not the semi-solid state, not the semi-liquid ones that you see in China and other markets, all solid state, if they cannot make it, this project will become nothing. He's referring to the project previously. So obviously it's like, it's just version two. It says version two of solid state batteries. I know I said I wouldn't speculate, but here we are. If we cannot produce version one of solid state batteries, this project version two will mean nothing. Obviously, he believes the question was whether the development will be completed in time. Here we are again. They teased solid state batteries in 2009 and much of the 2010, 2010s. They said, hey, it'll probably 2020 will get solid state batteries out. 2023 came around. All right. And we got, and then I made the spreadsheet in 2023 and they announced all these cool batteries coming out. Wouldn't we expect them? First solid state battery was from expected between 2027 to 2028. Now they're touting a thousand kilometers of range, which by the time it gets to the United States, I don't know, it could be 500 miles of range on our EPA cycle. It's hard to say. They said that there's a next gen solid state battery that they're working on as well. That's going to offer 1500 kilometers of range, which would just be mind blowing um, and 10 minutes to charge it from 10 to 80%. That is insane. Watch my review of the EV6 that I have coming out later today. Um, I charged it on a supercharger this week and I can't wait to share my experience charging it next to Tesla's at a supercharging station. But I tell you what, 10 to 80% did not happen in 10 minutes. All right, at a Tesla supercharger, nowhere close. Again, he's questioning whether the development will be completed in time. He says development is always unpredictable. Frankly, there's no telling if it will work out or not. That is, that's absolutely the last thing I want to hear about Toyota solid state battery development and timing. Frankly, there's no telling if it'll work out or not. That tells me that it's probably not going to work out by 2027 to 2028. Probably going to be much later than that. I hate to be like a Debbie Downer here. When it comes out of Toyota's vice president's mouth that he's questioning if it'll be completed on time and we're two years away and development's unpredictable. He's not confident if it's going to work or not. He loves taking encouragement from Akio Toyota's reminder that it's okay to fail. And it is through failure that we gain experience. He's talking more about failure with solid state batteries. And he is like, all this is just 
red flags for me. Red flag all the way through. And before he even talked about solid state batteries, when asked on solid state batteries, he's like, hey, before I talk about solid state batteries, I'd like to talk a little bit more about our strategy, which Toyota's strategy hasn't changed forever or since they introduced hybrids. Like they still want to reduce carbon emissions by uh, improving ICE cars, hybrids, plug in hybrids, fuel cells, EVs. That's that's what he's talking about for most of this before he even gets into solid state battery. It is through failure we gain experience. I agree with that. And failure can also, it leads you down two paths. It leads you to complete ruin or it leads you to innovate, to revamp yourself or your company in this case in order to find success. And for young developers, such experience fuels new development challenges. That's what we hope to facilitate. Young developers, I don't know what he means by this. Maybe they have a bunch of young engineers out of college um, and they're asking them to fail on solid state batteries before they find, you know, their golden ticket here. I don't, I don't exactly know what it means for young developers. Toyota has been developing solid state batteries. They have the most patents on solid state batteries by far for the last 15 years. And he's talking about young developers. So maybe the old developers are like, Hey, yeah, the, the, we kicked out our old developers on solid state batteries. They couldn't get it done. So we're, we're trying to break in these new developers, these new engineers to try to figure out the solid state. But I don't know what this means. Oh, he says, personally, I hope we can keep to the promised timeline and deliver all solid state batteries as a key element for ushering in the future. Yeah. Um, not feeling good about it. Again, circling back to the spreadsheet I made years back, you know, the performance version has been postponed. It was supposed to be coming in 2026. Uh, the vehicle, the LFZC, um, or whatever Lexus is going to call the production version of, of it. Uh, well, I believe that's been pushed back to the first half of 2027. All right. And that's just with the performance uh, battery, which we haven't seen yet. I've seen a, a mock-up of it at the Japan Mobility Show with a gigacasted battery structure around it. But I haven't seen, we haven't seen it in production yet. And you're not going to see it next year. The, the bipolar lithium iron phosphate battery, I think could happen by 2027. This would really reduce costs on cars, or should I say electric cars. All right. Um, but we don't see any LFP standard structure monopolar, I guess you could say, uh, in the United States yet. So I don't, I don't know. Maybe, maybe they come out with it in China or something. I'm not sure, quite sure. All right. Then they're going to be mixing bipolar technology with the performance version in 2027. This will be getting us essentially solid state battery performance in terms of density, it seems like, but maybe not in terms of weight. Maybe not in terms of charging capacity and of course not in terms of safety. Uh, so, you know, it's definitely a stopgap. And then solid state batteries, like these to me are still pie in the sky. Them coming in 2028, I I hope it happens. Absolutely. I want solid state batteries. Solid state batteries have the potential to make EVs. Um, flat out be ice cars, assuming you have the infrastructure to charge them fast enough. That's another issue altogether. But it takes a huge step forward into popularizing EVs, solid state batteries. They're safer. Or they aren't affected by cold or heat as much. They last a lot longer than standard lithium ion batteries. And they're more energy dense. So you can have the same range you have now for half the weight of the battery pack. And that's one of the things plaguing battery or battery electric vehicles are just so dang heavy. They chew through tires more, requires more minerals, etc. So solid state batteries are almost the silver bullet, assuming the infrastructure surrounding it is adequate enough. It's just pie in the sky for Toyota. So we're going to move on. So I wanted to talk about tariffs a little bit. What's the update here? They could send Toyotas made in the United States to Japan. That's option one, like the CRV, the Camry. They don't make the Camry in Japan anymore. So that that would make sense. But um, they also are thinking about Toyota potentially importing other American brands and to be sold at their Toyota dealerships. Typically, that doesn't happen in Japan. Typically, it's just one brand sold at a dealership. In the U.S., we can see multiple brands sold at a dealership, right? They reminded us in the 90s, Toyota sold the Cavalier. 
and the Scepter Station Wagon. Those were both made in the US by Toyota. Remember, Toyota and General Motors had a joint plant in California. Uh, Tesla now operates out of there. That's where things like the Toyota Matrix and Pontiac Vibe came from. And besides importing cars, another way to offset the deficit would be if Japan imported US crude oil. But from the research I was doing, Japan can't refine the, the type of crude oil that we have in the United States. They prefer the crude oil that comes from the Middle East. It doesn't seem like Japan likes the type of oil we have and they don't have the, the facilities to process it as easily as the crude oil from the Middle East. So yeah, I mean, it's just, I don't think this, the, we're not gonna have a trade deal anytime soon between United States and Japan, unfortunately. So cars are gonna go up in price uh, quite massively that are imported from Japan in theory. All right, that's my guess. They're gonna go up and up and up multiple times a year to offset the tariffs. Nissan has their issues besides tariffs, right? Foxconn might move into the Obama plant, which employs almost 4,000 people for Nissan in Japan. You see as a test track here, Nissan, if, if Nissan were to close this plant, which they need, they're, they're thinking about closing seven out of their uh, 17 plants in, in the world, okay? So the thing about closing one of their oldest plants, it has a test track. They have no other test track in Japan to my understanding. All right. So if they if they were to close this plant, Nissan would have to build a new plant or a new test track or use use some other test track to test their vehicles. Also, you can see that there are shipping um, boats here that they can load the cars onto. So it's a very well-rounded plant. It's a one-stop shop essentially for car development, car uh, for shipping cars, producing cars, testing cars but it's no longer profitable for Nissan. Nissan's operating. So they're only operating at 40% production capacity. Capacity You need to be at 80 plus percent to make money or even to break evens 80%. To make money, you need to be producing over 80% at a production facility. All right. Opama since 1961 is one of Nissan's core plants. Annual capacity is 240,000 units. And what's likely to happen is Foxconn is going to take half the stake of this plant and start building EVs out of here. I don't know what to think about it. Nissan needs help. And Foxconn, who's, uh, you know, they obviously they make iPhones, but their EV division is helmed by a former Nissan CEO. There's a lot of synergy that could happen here. Nissan's EVs could get better. Uh, through Foxconn. Foxconn can can take advantage of Nissan's manufacturing prowess. I, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen here, but I don't want this plant to close. That would be an absolute heartbreaker for Nissan and the history uh, at this Opama plant. So I'll see you guys in the comments. Do you think Toyota solid state batteries are going to uh, manifest by 2027, 2028? It doesn't look good. Nakajima vice president really didn't do any good here to give me confidence uh, in Toyota launching Sol State on time once again. It's okay to fail. That's what they, he, you know, that's the main takeaway about solid state batteries. It's okay to fail. And he's worried about getting it there on time. So it doesn't sound good. I'll see you guys in the comments. Have a great day and stay tuned for more news updates here on the channel. Peace.